welcome to Texas Truck Channel. My name is Brian, and behind me I have something that is super exciting, and that is the 2024 Polaris XD Ranger 1500. And as the name would, you know, imply, it's for extreme duty. Now, I want to point out a few things. The Ranger's been around for a while. It's a freaking legend at what it does. It's great. We actually have one recently on loan, 1000 XP, and we were blown away by how good it was and how refined it was. Think of that as an F-150. Think of this as an F-250 Super Duty. That is exactly what's happened here. So for you truck guys, I want you to understand what this is. This is not a beefed up Ranger. This is an all new platform. Everything about it is different. It is not sharing anything with the old Ranger. Now design language is about the same, but beyond that, it's just beefed up all around. So let's start with the frame itself. The frame is just more steel, thicker steel, thicker tubing and the rigidity is 160% increased, which is a big deal because that means that this beefy suspension can now do more with it. So in the previous Ranger, you never noticed a ton of flex, but you notice some flex. You would get basically the front and rear would do a little bit of twist over some kind of jaunts and that kind of stuff. And these are bigger shocks. They are Z shocks and they are uh, right height adjustable in terms of preload, just like all the other player stuff. The springs are beefier, control arms are beefier. And these are arched A-arms, and these give you 15 inches of ground clearance. And I want to point something out. It's not like it's just ground clearance in the very middle. Look how wide the area is in the middle. It doesn't arc down to the very edge of the tire. It's impressive. We went over a bunch of logs. I've been driving this thing for about two days now on a lot of dirt, a lot of ranch roads. We're out in Wyoming in a beautiful ranch out here. And it just, we didn't drag it once anywhere. Um, and we took a lot of trails that were like, kind of new they weren't totally plotted out by platters yet so we tried some new stuff and it just really did really good um wheel and tire let's talk about that these are 30 by 10 kendas or cross trails and uh they're now on side wall but they've got good beef these are incredibly stable at all speeds and they have just the right amount of grip that they don't howl they won't make any road noise look down deep in here and you can see the front diff and you can see the electric power steering rack right there that's pretty cool also cooling systems up here and the front you get high and low beam headlights with signature LED treatment. Also get it in the brush guard here. And we're on the uh, North Star Edition, so it's got more goodies. Out front, you've got a 6,000 pound Polaris engineered winch, synthetic nylon rope with fair lead. These D-rings are so quiet, we didn't hear them rattle at all on this trip. And out front, you've got a battery tender port. So if it's gonna be parked for a while, you can keep this thing charged up while it's in your garage. Now, let's show you under the front service panel. Two clips, comes right off. I'll set this on the ground. And much like previous Rangers, you've got your expandable accessory circuits here for uh, extra lights, that kind of stuff. You've got an air intake hidden here up high, so it's good. And it's protected from dust a little bit, but mostly water protection. This is for the radio antenna. More on that in a minute. And this is something new. That's a washer nozzle because this is a glass windshield with a wiper and with sprayers. That saved us on this trip. All right, let's hop in the cab. It does have hard panels all around and they are suicide doors, which I think are cool. They open this way. The regular Ranger has mesh nets. You have to kind of open and clip and all that kind of stuff. This has been real nice. And one thing I like is that all this dusty driving we've been doing, the dust is low. This is from the outside and that's from the inside. That's what a difference it makes. A non-hard top uh, Ranger would be just, man, you'd just be caked in it on this kind of, a, kind of a drive. It's really nice. And also what helps this thing work so well, let's look right here, full on climate control. AC right here and also recirculative AC, so max AC, defrost, everything, just like a car. And then your center cluster here, you have ride command, which tells you where other players' rigs are at, which is really cool. We use this a ton on this trip and you can see where your crew is at. It keeps everyone together. And then you can go to a gauge cluster. I like this a lot because it's quick view. So you can see engine temp, trans temp, speed and RPM. Also a quick icon here shows you if the diff is locked or it's all wheel drive mode, all that kind of stuff. Seatbelt reminder and percentage of fuel left. And there's also a lot of that is repeated up here with fuel gauge, um, analog, speedo and tack on either side. And this is similar to other players items that you have. That's pretty cool. Um, one more thing I want to point out is that these right here are heated seats. And for Craig, who's not here with us on this trip, he would love that when you press it, it doesn't start at three, it starts at one. So like most pickup trucks, like Ford F-150s, you press this and it starts at three and you press it again to break it down. This one just goes to it. That's pretty neat. You also have your phone connectivity, which mine's not paired here, but you can do that. 
You've got the stereo. Here's your input. So you can do AM, FM, weather radio, USB connection, and Bluetooth, which all these work. It's been great. And then that's how you control it and then your volume controls. The reason why there's not a knob here is I needed to make it waterproof because this interior is completely waterproof. You can pressure wash this thing inside and out. Something else that's a big, big deal is drive controls here. You've got your lights, that's your off, park, headlights, high beams, all drive controls. This is what you press to unlock the rear diff. I'm a little confused why it's, that's not what you press to lock it. It seems backwards to me, but it's fine. It still works. I have noticed that it is reluctant to unlock quickly. Sometimes you have to stop or roll back and forth a little bit. That's fine. But the all-wheel drive comes on and off immediately. Like there's no delay on it doing what it needs to do. Drive modes. You have so in the cluster here, sport, standard, and comfort. And to do tow haul, you press it once, goes to tow haul mode. Now, something you'll notice as well is that there is not a low range on this transmission. There's park reverse drive. Something else that's pretty neat down here is you have your power dump bed, which we're gonna go ahead and open that now. That's pretty cool. And then you also have um, additional light circuits here. That's for your brush guard lights. And then up here, phone holder right in the top. Like that a lot. Um, let's talk about interior comfort though before we go to the back. I'm 6'5", and in the previous Ranger, I would hit my knee a lot. They have added over two and a half inches of knee room, just with the cab being bigger, and headroom, which I never needed in the first place. But this top's also insulated really well. A little secret, it's quieter than a Ford Bronco at 65 miles an hour in terms of wind noise and roof. Really impressed with that. Overhead, you have a, a domed rear view mirror, which is really nice. It helps a lot, um, especially when you don't have side mirrors. That comes in handy. And then this is your uh, chase light. There's a light on the back of the cab I'll show you in a minute. And then you have reading lights up here. Something else I want to point out is you have a backup camera. Now the bed is tipped so the camera's in a weird spot. And if you want to just get the elements inside, quick push up of the glass window. You also have power windows. Here's your winch control and then here's your wiper. That is a game changer. We use it all weekend long and then a rear auxiliary if you'd like it. That's pretty cool. In terms of glove boxes, you have sealed weather stripped top box which is easier to open than the last ranger i've been in and then an actual lower glove box like a normal vehicle that's pretty cool oh and the stereo it's a jbl stereo and it's actually pretty good happy with that so what you have lost though from the other ranger is cup holders up here but you have cup holders on the transmission hump down here below now these are i call these heated because you get a lot of engine heat here so i kept my coffee here no big deal and i kept my cool drinks up top in the armrest you have another cell phone slot here and your seatbelt harnesses that flips up provides the third seat all right time for the engine back here and there it is see those coil packs one two and three that is a three cylinder and three see your intake runners one two three cast aluminum intake manifold more on that in just a second but this is effectively the motor straight out of the pro r razor minus some boost and minus some camshaft calibration but your bore and stroke is identical and the architecture is identical what they have had to do is rotate the same 50 degrees sideways to maintain a low bed height. If they had it mounted like they do in the, the Pro R, this deck height would be so high it wouldn't be usable. So they've done a lot of work there. You can see here there's your uh, auxiliary coolant reservoir right there and then another air box. Look how big that heat shield is. And it goes to a flex pipe between the uh, header manifold to the exhaust. We heard no rattles back here. It was super quiet. The exhaust note sounds pretty cool. I like that a lot. No complaints there. And this gives us a good look of that chassis. Look how big that tubing is right there. This overarching panel, these pieces here. It's just stout. Okay, time for the bed itself. And I wanna point out that rear chase light right there. When you're in deep dust, that is a super safety feature. I've never appreciated those more than on this trip today. And as you can tell back here, you've got the rear tailgate design. It's a North Star. I think this is a really pretty bed design. Something that I've thought about the Rangers in the past is, oh, it looks kind of utilitarian. This one has a nice LED tail light and good texture between texture black and painted panels. I like it a lot. And the texture blacks in spots to kind of block tree limbs and stuff from like impacting. It's just a good design. I think it's aesthetically very, very pleasing. Now your tailgate is traditional. It's not, it doesn't need to be dampened because it's not that heavy. You do have cup holders, four of them. You've also got little slots where your phone will actually fit right there. And then of course, because you know, anyone with uh, you know, well, anything needs a measure. So you've got measuring right here to, you know, measure your manhood. And then you've got tie downs, all four corners. Polaris is really good about that. Cutouts for four or five gallon buckets and you can strap them over really well. Two more cup holders in the top corners and power in the bed. Check that out. That is unheard of in side by side. You've also got your slots here for anything you want to make to put in there. 
cup holders. And then this right here is not an actual accessory. It's actually a representation of the latch. So this is not actually a tie down, but they put this here so we could feel how it works and it is buttery smooth. Oh man, look at that. And then down here is your trailer hitch. This thing is good to tow 3,500 pounds, which is crazy. And that's the thing about this. This is really meant for ranchers that need to haul things in rough terrain that their diesel truck would just not make it up. It's too heavy. And the old Ranger towed 2,500, which is good, but this is now enough that you could haul, you know, pretty heavy equipment, hay bales, that kind of stuff and do well with it. That's awesome. And there's also more accessory mounts right here for other items down the road. All that covered. Let's go drive it and see how it is. All right, guys, ride and drive time. Let's talk about chassis and suspension. We're obviously driving the 1500. This is the North Star, which means we have a full cab, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But I want to talk about the chassis first. When you're on a road at speed, we're doing 25 now on choppy terrain. Um, pardon the radio. If we're in a group ride, might hear that a little bit. Um, I am blown away at how stiff it feels. It feels like a cohesive product. It's not just a bunch of steel tubes put together. It's rigid. Um, and that's something that you you could feel in the in the regular Ranger a little bit, although not a ton, but you did notice the flex over obstacles where the front and rear were twisting. This just doesn't do that. And part of that has to do with the roll cage that's in here. It's not just stamped or welded steel. It's actually cast and plated and bolted together in such a way that it adds to the rigidity. Now, what that does is it allows the suspension to do its work. And these shocks are big. They are bigger than the Rangers, just like everything on this rig. Everything's just bigger and beefier and better. Um, that rings true here as well. You can feel each corner doing its thing. In fact, I've tried my darndest to bottom this thing out. I can't do it. Um, not at um, safe speeds on these type of trails. And we've given it our, our all to do so. Um, and it's hard to jump it too because the droop is so much. It's kind of like a Ford Raptor or more like a Ford Raptor kind of like this and that it has a lot of travel. And that's where that 12 inches of suspension travel comes into play. Here's a good bump. I'm not going to slow down. If, uh, look, if you did that in a Toyota Tacoma, it would knock your teeth out at that speed. No question about it. And that's why these things can be thirty to forty-five thousand dollars, and demand the price because you're not doing this with a normal pickup truck, not at this speed. Now I have noticed that the suspension is in that droop. When you get it over obstacles, trying to articulate it and get it twisted up, you'll feel the front rear corner, or I'm sorry, front right corner droop out and go kunk. That's cool, but it took a lot of twists to do that. And that's also because this rear engine, um, the weight transfer is just there. You're gonna lift that tire before a back tire. That's how it goes. But it's great. And one thing I wanna point out is that we've been driving this thing for days. We've probably driven 90 miles on dirt on this trip so far, or will be by the time we're done here. And fatigue is, I've never gone on a ride and had this little fatigue. And part of that goes into the noise and harshness. Um, I talked to engineering last time about that too. I said, hey, MVH, what do you do here? He goes, we care a lot about the sound. And not only the sound, but the octaves and pitch and tone. Some sounds will wear you out more than others. And some riders want to hear the engine. So they've actually tuned the intake and exhaust to reduce the harshness that wears you out. The suspension rides so well and the seat comfort is so good. You feel like you've been driving a full-size truck all day. Like, it's no big deal. That's really, really impressive from a brand that's a power sports producer. And I'm a truck guy. I come from that end of the world. They are really getting close. And because of the way the suspension is laid out, it justifies the price more than ever to me. You cannot buy a Toyota Tacoma, TRD Pro or TRD Sport and do this kind of driving this long at this speed and, and also be this capable off-road. That's what ranchers need. They need to cover distance in comfort. And in a lot of states where you can drive them on the road, ranchers just drive these things into town and like go get their coffee and lunch or whatever. They kind of do it all. All right, we're gonna splash some mud here. I'm not slowing down for it. God, it just, it just doesn't care. It just doesn't care at all. Um, powertrain, one thing I wanna point out too is that there is built-in engine braking. And that is part of the engine transmission calibration. This is interesting because the drive modes aren't just throttle mapping anymore. They are also covering transmission mapping. And actually the transmission is telling the throttle mapping what to do. What that means is the CVT is adjusting its belt before the throttle body opens up on the engine. And you can feel that sometimes, but it's cohesive and it works. Um, one thing I have noticed that it's actually kind of fun, but maybe concerning for some, on super steep slopes, if you tap the brake, it will start to engine brake for you. And what happens is the rear diff starts dragging before the front. 
I would rather it be the rear. Personally, I want to keep my steering. I don't want that to wash out. I would rather the rear wash out. And it's kind of fun going down slopes. It also has, got this is super rocky and super non-jarring. Um, it also has hill hold assist, which is something you see in manual transmission cars all the time. But that's a first for, uh, for Polaris, and that's pretty neat. All right, we're gonna crawl over a rock bed right here. This is a creek rock bed, and it is just, it's fine. Look, if you were in a $40,000 Tacoma or Ford Ranger, this would be much more jarring than we're in right now. I'm enjoying it for sure. Now let's talk about transmission. Something new with this one is you have no low range. I was super, super curious about this. So I was talking to players last night about it and they told me, we did the calculations on what low range does on the current 1000 XP Ranger. And they were able to achieve the same torque to crawl ratio with the bigger engine than this has and the wider um, usable ratio range that the transmission has. So they basically said, if you want to crawl a ledge, the trick is to put it in tow haul mode because it makes the CVT start at a lower range. It's not actually technically a low range, but it opens up both pulleys and gets them where they're ready to crawl up stuff. And with the torque that it has, it just doesn't need low range. That's really impressive. And it simplifies it. It's one less thing to go wrong down the road for long-term serviceability. So that about covers ride and drive. I think it's really cool, it's impressive, it, and the, the fatigue thing is the biggest deal. Is this a sport UTV? No, it's not a drift monster, although you can get it out. Um, it's a utility thing, and it has to do a lot of truck things, and it's doing it really, really well. I love I covered, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed this. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe. If you like it, tell us. If you wanna see more, subscribe so you see more. Thank you for watching, we'll see you next time. I'm gonna do my best to not hit a cow. Thank you.